Good morning, everyone. I'm Angela Fazio. I am so excited about our guest today. She is absolutely phenomenal. Her name's Gogo, and she is um, a, a top producer with 8 million in production, but that is like just the tip of the iceberg about how interesting she is, and you are going to love this podcast. So get your earphones on, ignore everything else, and let's get started. Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hello, ladies. Hi, Kristen. Hello, Gogo. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. This is, I've been looking forward to this for weeks. So I am super I'm excited. So um, I love your story. I love what you do. So many people are going to be blessed to hear about your background and the things that you can offer of value. So why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself? Oh, gosh. Well, I got this great idea. I think I was eight. I watched an Eddie Murphy movie. Um, originally, I'm from Romania. And right as communism ended, my dad came home with a color television and a, and a VCR player and brought home two movies, uh, 48 Hours by Eddie Murphy. And uh, that was my first time introduction. Like when you live in communism, it's like living in a shoebox with a lid on. Like news doesn't come in, books don't come in, like nothing outside of, of Romania, they knew. I, so when I saw that movie, that was the first time for me realizing that there are other kinds of people besides just white people, because that's all we had. Like I've never seen anything but white until then. And I just thought he was so funny. Like I thought he was the funniest human being I have ever seen in my life. And he seemed so happy to me. And I remember as an, as an eight year old, I'm like, I'm going to go wherever that man is at because he's so happy. He's probably happy because of where he's at. You know, I'm an eight year old. What do I know? Mm -hmm. And so that's my first recollection of going to America. And uh, then when I was 21, you know, life works out for you, for our favor. So whatever you set, uh, con um, consciously or unconsciously, your internal GPS is going to take you there. So when I was 21, I got the opportunity to come to the U.S. as an au pair. And oh, I really? yeah, oh, nice. I did not know that. No. I, I hired you. <laughs> I know. I was definitely hired you. You were probably <laughs> an amazing au pair. Oh yeah. I mean, I, just <laughs> I, I have to be honest with you. The wife wasn't a fan. <laughs> I only did that for six months, but um, I loved that. I had four children um, to watch, and and I learned a lot. I my English was very broken. Um, I thought I spoke English until I arrived at New York Airport, and this big tall black guy was talking to me, and I said English, please, and he said I'm speaking it. I was like, oh, <laughs> if you English, then I'm not speaking English. I learned British English, the proper English. So when I came here, it's like, you know, you guys say, how are you? And there I learned, how do you do? So if I said here, how do you do? You would be looking at me like, what? <laughs> and the hardest part was to learn slang. And yeah. then uh, I met my husband two months after. Uh, so I spent two weeks in New York going through the au pair training. Then I was transferred to my host family in Michigan. Um, and pretty much at my two months in the state of Michigan, I met my husband in a bar. At St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> where else? Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah. Awesome. And um, we hit it off. He invited me for a date. Um, so we met on a Tuesday, first date on a Saturday. Then I met his parents on Sunday. Two months after that, I was moved in. Two months after that, we were married. Shut up! Oh my gosh! So how long have you been married now? Uh, Seventeen years. Oh my gosh! That's awesome. That so, I did not know that about you. What a great story! <laughs> Oh, no. I remember calling my parents to tell them that I'm getting married because Dwayne proposed. And my dad goes, what did you say his name was? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, oh we, we kind of have a problem. Yeah, I'm, I might be jumping ship here, but, you know, you know what you know. Um, wow. We've been happily married for 17 years. Uh, you know, it gets better with time. I feel like we hit bumps along the road, but we are stronger than ever. Um, well, and now you're working together, right? He just got his real estate license. Yeah. Now on top of it all, <laughs> he's a licensed, mm -hmm. licensed realtor too. Since October 2nd, he quit his corporate America job um, and a full-time realtor now. That is That's awesome. so cool. 
It is such, that is such a good story. I love the how we met stories. I, I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. That's so good. Yeah. You have a great one. Keep telling it. So tell us about your kids. Yeah, so we have two boys. Uh, we kind of lived a little bit of the young life first. So the boys are, Kobe's going to be 13 this month, and Duke mm -hmm. is going to be 11 um, next month in August. Um, Kobe is type 1 diabetic and colorblind and has celiac. Oh, oh really? Duke is fine. <laughs> but he's fine. <laughs> right? Is that why you cook? Yeah. So I, well, yes and no. I always was interested. Well, I couldn't say always. I started being interested in nutrition um, when I moved to the U.S. Because I gained 16 pounds in the first month and I was here. And mind you, I was always 96 pounds. Like 98, sorry. 98 pounds soaking wet. Like I, a little person. And what happened is I moved to the U.S. in the first month I gained 16 pounds, for, which for me was like 20% of my body weight. You know, I thought you said 60 pounds at first. I'm like, what? Yeah. No. Okay. 16. <laughs> uh, no. Um, so I started looking. So I ended up going to a doctor here because I thought something was wrong with me. I thought maybe I'm pregnant, but I'm like, I can't be pregnant. I haven't had sex unless I'm St. Mary. You know what I mean? Like, what <laughs> is going on here? So I went to a doctor. And the doctor looks at me and he goes, honey, are you from Eastern Europe? And I'm like, yes. He goes, then stop eating meat and dairy and you'll be fine. And I was like, what do you mean stop eating meat and dairy? Like, I'm from Eastern Europe. That's all we eat. <laughs> it's meat and potatoes. <laughs> so um, and then I, that kind of opened up my eyes to start doing research about it. Like, what does he mean by it? Realized all of the difference between, you know, my body was never used to antibiotics, but not due to hormones, but not used to the things that animals are given here to grow bigger so you have more meat to sustain a whole country um i was used to my grandma had sheep my grandma had goats my grandma had cows my grandma had pigs my grandma had chickens my grandma had everything we ate my grandma had it came from far, farm to fork there was no antibiotics there was no nothing they ate literally off of the fields you know fresh stuff and and um so that kind of opened up my eyes for well, a minute it's not like that here and then I had to figure out, okay, what do we need to do in order to, A, lose the weight and, and continue upkeep it? And so that kind of started my journey of understanding food and understanding the food in America, especially. And yeah. so we went down on that route. We only eat organic. So if you see any meat, fruit, vegetables, any dairy in my house, it's always organic. We do not joke around with that. Um, we actually just hired a chef uh, last week. That was my goal for the year. And uh, we couldn't do it because I can't trust that it's organic. And I really can't get over it. You know what I mean? So it's not something that, unless she's making it right here where I can see that she's pulling off the label and it says organic right on there, I just can't trust it. My husband's like, I'm not eating it. This. So literally one of the chicken breasts was like this big. If you eat organic chicken, you know they don't naturally grow that big. So yeah. I just like, I can't trust it. If I can't trust it, I just can't put it in my body. Um, so we stopped that and, and we are going to probably figure out hiring somebody now that can maybe come to the house once or, you know, a couple of times a week where I control the groceries and I can watch them make it. So then that way my mind is at ease knowing that we are eating organic. Um, but then that took me down on the rabbit hole of, of researching other things. When I met my husband, he had allergies really bad. I never met anyone. I never even heard the word of allergy in my life. Um, oh. And I started researching that. And so I got, then I leased the cow, <laughs> believe it or not. So um, I, the cow? I can go down the rabbit hole for you. Oh, you the cow? Yes, because in Michigan, and I don't know in other states, but in Michigan, you cannot buy raw milk. It's illegal. Um, mm -hmm. But I need raw milk in order to. Whole milk? milk? So whole milk is different. Uh -huh. It means that the fat is in the milk. Raw milk, uh -huh. is, it was not heated. It was not treated. Mm -hmm. Um, in the mm -hmm. store. So they in the US, they treat and they homogenize milk where they spin it so fast. If you think about back in the day when they dropped off the glass milk at your front porch, mm -hmm. there was cream on top, you mm -hmm. remember? And the milk in the bottle. Now you will never find milk that has cream on top because it's homogenized, which means they spin it so fast that they change the molecular structure of the milk and mm -hmm. now it's mixed into the milk. You don't have to shake your milk anymore. There's no cream on top. My gosh, there's you are a wealth of knowledge. I know, I love all this, but there's a brand here. Um, you can get it at like Sprouts, and it's a glass jar, and it does. It has the cream at the top, and you, yeah, when you take the lid off, it's like a bubble. 
and you yeah. do have to shape it, but yeah, it's, it yeah. is like, but it probably says on there right on there it's non-homogenized so you can buy non-homogenized yeah. milk and even in michigan there's a company who does it but you can't buy raw milk so mm -hmm. which means the milk was heated when they heat it they heat it for a reason they heat it to kill the bacteria but when you heat it you also change you're also killing the good bacteria with the bad mm. mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, had no idea. I had no idea about that. So you, in order to get raw milk to to help cure my husband's allergies, um, I had to lease a cow because when you own your own cow, you own their bodily fluids. And milk, <laughs> milk is a bodily fluid. <laughs> I I own my dog's pee. <laughs> <laughs> if you own the dog, you own their bodily fluid. So that's how every day I got local raw honey, local raw milk. The the milk in order to treat allergies, it has to be full whole milk, um, because the allergens attach themselves to the fat in the milk. When you remove the fat, you remove the allergen. So what happens is your body naturally doesn't get used to it. So I can roll around in poison ivy in the backyard because I was raised on goat's milk, and goat's favorite food is poison ivy. Wow. Really? Yeah, so I naturally got the allergens from the organic raw goat's milk, what I was raised on. So I can go and pick it by hand, roll around, nothing happens. My husband just walks by it, and the wind hits it, he turns out in a crash. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah, so just, think, you know, things like, well, but that took me down on the rabbit hole of chemicals uh, yeah. and <laughs> vaccines. And so mm -hmm. my children are not vaccinated. They haven't had a single vaccine. Um, they haven't really had antibiotics or any pills. Um, yeah. We always try to do everything, um, home remedy, taking care of. So when Kobe was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, where it's a drug that keeps him alive. Mm -hmm. That, that must have been hard. That was probably the biggest punch in the gut I got in my life. Mm. Then, I to, then I had to accept that there is a time and a place for medicine. You know, it's a life mm -hmm. drug. Prior to uh, 1940s when insulin was invented, Children with type one or adults, whoever got type one, would have passed within four months. And now he's alive due to a drug. So to me, when I don't take, I don't take Tylenol. Like I've never, I've never tried any drugs. I've never smoked a regular cigarette. Like I am way off the. My husband says I'm lame. Um, I'll have a drink. I mean, that's a, that's a drug. I'll have a drink here and there, but I you'll never see me shit face either. Excuse my French. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a control issue. I need to know what's going on, where I'm at, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but that's how it, it started. And then it turned into, you know, my, my husband doesn't have allergies. Wow. Yeah. I believe it though. Cause when my husband and I travel to Europe, we always, always talk about food because the food mm -hmm. is definitely poison here. It's poison. Oh yeah. It's so bad. Like mm -hmm. we have these big fat grapes and we have these really, uh, you know, all these big strawberries and all that. You go over to Europe and they're little teeny grapes and they're delicious. Mm -hmm. right. it's watermelon. When I see the seedless watermelon, I'm like, just think about it. How? If watermelon was seedless, we would never have watermelon again because you need the seeds to plant it. Right. And so mm -hmm. when humans right. remove that, and, and you know, it's genetically modified because God created it with the seeds. You remember growing up, there were big black seeds in it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Amount. Yeah, I always joke around like when I buy sour cream or I buy yogurt, I buy anything. I always buy it whole milk because mm -hmm. I don't want humans touching my food. I don't want them removing things because that's when you mess with it, you're changing how God made it. Create if God made the milk with fat, there's a reason why fat's in the milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Crazy. I, you know what? I'm gonna make a confession to you right now. I actually forgot we were live on Facebook because I am so I'm so interested in this conversation. <laughs> I forgot what we were here for. <laughs> we're not even kidding at all. Oh my gosh. Okay, that is fascinating. So, I, oh hi everyone. <laughs> so, I mean, I about real estate. This is a totally different. It's okay. So, how did you get into real estate? Uh oh. Did we freeze oh, her? Oh, but she's cute. Frozen. <laughs> Cute. When I freeze, I'm like all. Oh, no, I mean, I mean, look. <laughs> something like that. I oh my gosh! That. I wonder. <clears throat> I can't she's believe she's frozen out. like that. I have to take a picture for her because that's. I know it's so cute. She looks so cute right there. She <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> for sure. She might have to pop off. Let me see. Well, I hi. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can do it. 
I don't think I can help her. Uh, I wonder yeah. why all this. So, oh well, she's gone. She's coming back. back. Again. Yeah, she's gonna pop back in. So right now we look cool in our little slide things. Technical oh, difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> I can pop into her box. Hi, I'm Gogo. -Go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, you guys, you, here's some things you need to know about Gogo. -Go. She is yeah. a social media genius, and she's going to give you guys an offer because um, she has a, a social media boot camp that's out of this world. If you don't, if you've never seen her on Instagram, you need to. Yes, you need to follow yeah, me. Yeah, I Go -Go. <laughs> so I'll tell you one of my favorite. There you are. I took a picture of you because you froze like this. So cute. You froze yeah, so cute. Oh, no. Tag me. Tag me in it. For sure. I will. So how did you get into real estate? Why real estate? So that's another child story. So when Duke was born, so my second child was born, I worked up to last minute in corporate America. And I got the FMLA and the six weeks unpaid and whatever. So when I went back at nine weeks, um, literally I went back on Monday and on Tuesday I had to take Friday. I think that week I had to take him into the doctors because he wasn't feeling good. So we ended up spending a month in the hospital. We almost lost Duke. He got Giardia. And in the <laughs> hospital, I know, <laughs> like I had my first year in the hospital as a kid. I'm like, I, I'm all this in a bag of chips. But when I see a sick child, it, that, that's when I just, See the dark. I've never heard somebody say all that in a bag of chips in so long. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> like literally cried since junior high. <laughs> if I learn a slang, I stick to it. <laughs> it's a good one. I'm totally bringing it back. <laughs> they learned that all that in a bag of chips. I'm sorry, what? How do you get Giardia from water? Uh, yeah, it's a freshwater parasite, but at the time it was only nine weeks old, and I nursed both of the boys for 12 months. Uh, sorry, 14 months, a year and two months. So he never even had water at that point. So they weren't really checking for Giardia. They were, but they weren't. So they missed it. They checked twice and they missed it. Um, but we almost lost him. So it was one of my darkest times. Spent a month in the hospital. I don't think I showered or brushed my teeth for a straight month because I wouldn't leave the child's sight. Um, but after that, I could not imagine handing my child over to a stranger so I can go back to work. So then I no stayed way. home. Yeah, no, I just couldn't. I was like, I don't care if you're eating peanut butter jelly for two years. I have to be with my child. Mm -hmm. And um, so we stayed. I stayed home for about a year and a half after. And he was good. And thank God he's healthy and, and just the cutest little mischievous child. Um, but... I also realized about a year and a half in that I'm not really cut out for this stay at home mom gig. <laughs> I, I need like, I need to put makeup on. I need to contribute to society. I need to make money. I need to feel like I'm worth something. Um, and I know I'm changing my child's life. And I, so I wanted to find something that I can continue being a mom, but I could still make good money on my terms. Not reporting to anyone. I work when I have the time. So for the longest, well, actually, it wasn't my idea. My neighbor, you know how God works in this, you know, God makes sure that the opportunity falls on your lap. So my neighbor walked out to me. We were on the driveway one day, and she's the marketing director for Capital Title, who's an in-house title company for Real Estate One in the state of Michigan. They were the largest real estate company at the time. And um, she said, you would be such a good realtor. You're so social, and you have so many friends, and you should be a real estate agent. And I, at that time, I was like, I watch HGTV. That's all I do all day. I can do this. You know, <laughs> it looks so simple. You think every agent is like, I just walk around, show million dollar properties. They're going to buy one and you make a commission and you move on to the next. I didn't realize that. Hold on a minute. Where are those buyers and sellers coming from? How are they going to find me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, so I went, and, I went and talked. She already set up the, the meeting with the broker. I went and talked to her. They offered me the job if and when I passed my license. They even covered my licensing if I passed. With the first transaction, they would reimburse me. I was like, okay. So I went. I got my license. I did the one week in class. Um, I learned better. Like, I can't learn through video because you lose I don't it. know how people do it online. I, I can't do it. 30 seconds, I couldn't. already responding to emails, I'm talking to my child, oh, yeah. I'm eating lunch, I'm running a load of laundry, I can <laughs> So um, I did it in class and uh, passed right away, first time, and went to Real Estate One, and I was with them for six and a half years. 
And then KW got to me. By that time, I built my social media to the point where um, they really started talking about what's called profit share. And I didn't know what that was. They were just talking about there's other ways of making money besides just chasing that next commission. And I was making very good money. And my cut was so good at real estate one that truly no one could touch it with a six foot pole. Like, I was like, you can't mm-hmm. afford me. Trust me. When I show you my numbers, you can't afford me to come over. And so they got me with profit share because I was already burnt out. I already reached my ceiling that year. I did 48 transactions personally. And my head was spinning. So even when I was home, I was doing this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm at home with my children, but I'm really not there. And I knew in order to make more money, I something had to change. I could not sell more transactions. Also, with the local price range, uh, locally the price range is between 180 and 250, and I was already in the in the mid 300. So I knew if I break into luxury, you know how that goes. Yeah, it's luxury, but they're gonna sit on the market for six months. It's less than one percent of the buyer who can afford it. Yada yada. I don't have patience for that. I want quick money. So I figured I'm like, okay, then that's then to grow a team. I also learned that I started that twice. Then I don't have the personality. Prior <laughs> to be a team leader, uh, I I was raised with Eastern European mentality of you know, get your shit done. I can't take excuses. I hate nothing more than lazy. Uh, oh, I can't work today because my cat has diarrhea. <laughs> you have more excuses. I oh my gosh, since I've been in the industry, I feel like all the time i'm like how do you stop working because of whatever their excuse yeah, is it's exactly. just yeah so i don't do well with that and i make people cry so for that i have christy that's one of the reasons why we started the show is to take away people's excuses so i yeah. we interview what women after women after woman after woman who has a sick child and deals with this and deals with that and still sells 8 million in real estate. I mean, that's one of the, the driving factors of what keeps me talking to people is like, come on, if you could just get rid of your excuses and stop being such a weenie. It get bought- out of your own way is what I, I like to say. Get out of your yeah. way. Yeah. Because you're blocking yourself from success. There's always a way. You have a problem. I'm still thinking of you making people cry as a team lead. <laughs> it's <laughs> fabulous in my head. <laughs> I do, so I'm not allowed to talk. Even with clients, I'm not allowed to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My husband literally officially made the call last week. He's like, you are not allowed to talk directly to clients anymore. Because now I'm in a position <laughs> where I get to choose who I work with. Where in the yeah. past, I had to look at people and be like, yeah, for $12,000, I'll be your best friend for 90 days. Yep, I can do this, $12,000, <laughs> I got this. You know what I mean? Like, that's the truth. Some people, you can only be around them because they're going to pay your mortgage. You can only be around them because they're going to put food on the table. Because if it was a choice, mm-hmm. I would never, because I do believe that people have energies. I do believe that people can drain you, you know, just as much being with people. There are people that <laughs> I would I would pay for them to, to go away. You know what I mean? So, and now, I mean, if we did. <laughs> we did that. <laughs> there was a whole lot of them that went away and it's all right with me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if I never see you again, I'll be perfectly fine and happy. So yeah. I'm at that point where I'm like, I get to choose who I work with. And if you don't fit that mold, I am not putting up with anyone, not even for thirty, forty thousand dollars No, no, not it. I walked away from one point four million double sided transaction um a few months ago just for that reason. And um I sleep just fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so me, I guess what was the last question? Well, yeah. you were you were te- you were on your journey and you oh, were really? telling you were at Keller Williams. You did two teams. Yeah. You started a team twice. Yep. Right. And then right. I guess I can thank Keller for opening my eyes <laughs> because you don't know what you don't know until it's in front of you. And you're like, oh, now I understand what revenue share is because now I understand what profit share is. But if I didn't switch to Keller to learn about profit share, I would have not had my listening ears because prior to Keller, many people talked to me about EXP, but I was like, no, it's a pyramid scheme. You guys are all weird. It's a set. <laughs> not it. Yeah. And then finally, after having my understanding of profit share, realizing that profit share only works if there's an actual profit to be shared. Right. Right. And a, it's not trackable. Um, I never knew where my money came from and it just really was not, no offense, but it, to me, was not worth my time. 
Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. taking that information over to EXP and finally having my listening ears um, and seeing real numbers and results is when I was like, I can't not be at EXP. Mm-hmm. I can always go back if this was a bad decision. I can always go back and pick it up at another brokerage, but I will never have an opportunity this early with the company. So I switched to EXP in 2000, no, October of 2018. So it's been a year and a half. Nice. And you know what? And a half, I mean, just think about that. I saw you were number four, I think, on that list the other day in a year and a half. That's yeah. so cool. I'm trying to catch up with Chuck. If he was <laughs> break. <laughs> Take him <laughs> to Europe for a month. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I And I'm going on the EXP bandwagon. I have, talking about surrounding yourself with people. Yeah. We closed our 900 agent brokerage and I, I don't regret a single minute of it. I am surrounding and meeting people and collaborating and growing more in the last, since I joined EXP than I have in years. It's, yeah. it's been extraordinary. And you say listening ears, I'm just looking for people who have listening ears, right? Yeah. I'm looking for people who are looking for me. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's it's extra, it's an extraordinary opportunity. I think any agent is a fool to not at least listen. Why wouldn't somebody listen? Why wouldn't somebody just listen? Like I love, when they, say, I love when they say, but I love my broker. I'm like, cut me a fifty-six thousand dollar check and I'll be so nice to you. I'll call you every morning and tell you how you're a freaking rock star. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to you. You paid them a fortune last year. Yeah. Would they still be so nice to you if you weren't with them? Would they still be so nice to you if you weren't cutting them a full year salary? Mm -hmm. Yep, Summer, you're right. (laughs) Hi, Summer. She's so cute. So, so um, you've been at ATP for a year and a half, and I think it's working out for you. You told me a milestone not too long ago. What was the milestone? Let's see now. What were you able to do with your revenue share check? <laughs> Cover all our bills. Business. Cover all bills. So not just how- personal, so starting car payments and health insurance and you name it, every bill that we have in the house. I mean, I have my Netflix on that list. Like I plugged in everything. <laughs> and then on top of it, our business bills too, which mine are very little because I don't have marketing costs. Really, my biggest cost is uh, Christy, my assistant. And other than that, I have very little cost. Uh, because I'm able to figure out how to do things with organic traffic on social media. Um, mm-hmm. But other than that, all, like all of our bills are covered in just one month of revenue share. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That mm-hmm. is awesome. How did you get so good at social media? Like what, what drew you to that? What, why, why is that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> I had no other choice. I barely spoke to it. I had no sphere of influence. I had no education in the US. I had no money to plug into marketing. I had no cousins that are going to buy a house from me or a college friend or something. And I was suddenly in sales in Pinckney, Michigan. Okay, You can't even find it on the map. Okay, <laughs> And B, because I'm a researcher. So when I want something, I will get to the end of YouTube, to the end of Google. I will talk to everybody who's in that industry to figure it out. So I figured out that 80% of the agents will give up in the first year. What's left, another 80% will give up in the second year. Now, the top 20% does 80% of the business. And I am no loser. I am the sorest loser you'll ever meet. I cannot. I will die trying. And so I was like, I'm not going to be that percentage. I am not going to be a statistics. If I want to do something, I will figure out a way to do it. And I realized I can't afford. So then I went into top producers' offices and I asked them, how do you do this? You know, why are you a top producer? And then. So one of them says, well, we cold call every morning from 8 to 11. <laughs> like, I have a freaking accent and my name is Gogo. That's the wrong 1-800 number. Like, oh, nobody is going to buy a house for me. That's the wrong number. Yeah, plus I have an accent. Like, <laughs> yeah, not the right cold calling for me. Not the right feel. Mm-hmm. And so then the next one was, well, we buy leads from Zillow. We spend about, whatever, $7,000 with Zillow. I was like, I have six bucks. I I don't have $7,000. And then the next one was, well, I really farm my area, and I really work my sphere of influence, which I'm like, don't have that option. 
Mm -hmm. So I went down all of the things. So it was a process of elimination to figure out everything I don't have or I can do or I won't do, which for me also cold calling, it's not because I could have not done it. I probably could have. I would have had to work much harder than other people because I have an accent, but I could have probably done it. But that's kind of, I always joke, I, this, that's against my religion. I can't do that. It's against my core being. I know what I bring to the table. And in my mind, these people are lucky that they get to work with me. I am not begging some stranger on the other end of the phone call to work with me. They are lucky they get to work with me. So I just, it was so against of how I feel that I just couldn't go against that feeling just so I can gain. Mm -hmm. It was against my personality. So then I realized that pretty much leaves me Facebook. So then I created a Facebook page and then I started posting everything on Facebook, just pretty much took them along the ride. I mean, if you think about it, when you get your license, the people who know you, they know you just got your license. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're not going to be the first one for you to practice on, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And with their biggest investment. So it, it takes a long time before the people that know you will actually do a transaction with you because they know you are new. And yes. so then I figured, well, then now I have to reach strangers. I have to be able to find strangers and my sphere was like five people, <laughs> like you know what I mean? So I had to uh, tap into that stranger category anyway. And that's how Facebook came about. So then I figured, I'm like, okay, if I'm opening a page and I am a brand new agent, then I am going to just say the truth. I'm a brand new agent and I'm taking you guys on the ride of how someone becomes a top producer because I knew I would. Mm -hmm. To come on the ride, I was like, oh my gosh, guys, what is this? Like if I go to a house and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Somebody asking me, is like, oh, that's an old fashioned doorbell. And I was like, really? It looked like a moving <laughs> shoot with two metal sticks in it. You know, things like that. And then people get that, they become a part of your journey. You know, they want to <laughs> see you know, like all the silly things or the, the stuff that is going on. And then um, eventually, probably about five years into my career, I got licensed in 2011. Probably about five years into my career, I started getting frustrated with, with transactions, frustrated with clients. You know, you, you start like first the excitement is so good, then you put all the negative to the side. But eventually you get to a point where the negative kind of has to be addressed or you have to release it. If not, it boils up, you leave the industry altogether. So mm -hmm. I was like, I need to take this pity party <laughs> over to Instagram. And uh, I figured, I don't know why at earth I thought that my, my followers from Facebook wouldn't just also follow me on Instagram. But I figured if I start a new account there, same name, there's different platform, I could actually talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. Because I didn't want to talk about the good, bad, and the ugly on Facebook because a lot of my followers were current clients or past clients. Mm -hmm. And so I figured I can take this party over to Instagram. So what happened is because I was talking a different tone, a different language, same industry, but different side, now I started having all these agents follow me that would feel my pain, that would understand what I'm talking about. And so that's how it started growing is because it was real estate related, but from an agent perspective, not necessarily catering to find the next buyer or seller. Hmm. And that's how the madness started. You do a great job. I was, I, me and Angela talk to a lot of people who, um, they always talk about, okay, everything's perfect on social media and they never share the, you know, the ugly parts of it. And you do that with um, with real estate, but you also do it like, I, what did you do the other day? It was you and somebody you work with and you're like, look how she's all done up and here I am with no makeup. And then you smiled and you're like, and I don't have my tooth in. And I was like, I love that. I was cracking up. It was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, but you do, when you decide you want the real, then you have to show the real. I don't know if you saw it a couple of days ago when my best friend called me, his name is Kevin, and he called me like, I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, well, <laughs> so I went working out with Christy, and, and uh, there's a group of ladies that we work out with. And as we got into the car, I saw a hair, and it was literally growing out of my forehead, like right there. Like, <laughs> and Christy was like, let me pull it. I'm like, no, 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 hold on, let me get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Christy's pulling her hair out of the middle of my forehead <laughs> and my best friend just lost it he goes there is no end to your to your thing <laughs> that's the thing like we are not perfect you know we we had a situation going on so the last few days I've been a little quiet because I don't know how not to share everything so if I'm not on there I, I can go on there and act like everything's fine if it's mm -hmm. not 
Um, and I wasn't necessarily in the position of sharing what was going on. So instead mm -hmm. of, I just, I didn't even go on there at all um, because I can't, I got so used to, then I literally just talk about like diarrhea of the mouth, everything that it goes through my mind, everything that's happening during the day, like literally good, bad and the ugly. Then I was like, I can go on there and act like everything's fine when we are in a, when we are in a situation. Mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to share the situation. So I'm like, I'm not even going to go on there. Um, so, yeah. you know, I'm okay with having my life out there. I don't, could care less what people think to be honest with you i got out of high school a long time ago um so for me it's if, if they want to follow me good if they want to come along the journey and see that my life is not perfect uh, my business is not perfect um there are good there's highs there's lows there's in the middle there are i can't believe i can't believe that there'd be one person one thinking person on this entire earth that wouldn't want to know you i swear I <laughs> Not long ago, she messaged me. She took it really personally because when there were riots here in Michigan during the COVID in Lansing, I went live and I just showed what's going on. Now, I didn't show my position on it of how I felt about the subject, but I just showed what's going on here in Michigan. So she was like, I can't believe you would promote that. I can't believe blah, 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 blah. And she's like, she really wanted to change my mind on the subject. And I was like, I'm sorry, but I have my stand on it. I have, you know, God gave me a brain and I like to use it. And I have an opinion and this is my opinion. Like, I don't, I'm not going to. And she's like, well, you're going to look, you're going to lose followers on that. I'm going to unfollow you because of that. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, no offense, but if I adjusted my opinion to cater to every single person that decided to follow me, I would have no personality in the end of the day. Right. Right. I it's can't so true. stick to me. And then it is yeah. her choice. If I no, she's no longer wishes to follow me because our views don't match. Then it is her choice to unfollow me and go live her life her way. Um, but mm. I'm not going to change my views and my beliefs just so I can make someone happy and like happy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. What a breath of fresh air. There's Kristen and I constantly talk about how fake people are online and it is a breath of fresh air to hear and to know that you're genuine online it's my awesome husband always said to us, how on earth do you have friends <laughs> <laughs> because how i'm always the opposite how on earth do you not have friends if you exactly. didn't yeah because i'm so blunt like you asked me how your your bottom looks in those jeans <laughs> i told my friend i'm like you're asian you don't have an ass. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. And she was like, oh my gosh, you're so right. We just had the biggest laugh out of it. But it just think like I can't be fake. So I told my husband, I'm like, I'd rather have a handful of friends that understand me and they know that I will never lie to you mm -hmm. than to have a million of them and they lie to my face. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree 100%. Actually, when my ass looks in the jeans, Tell me it looks hideous so I can go change it. <laughs> right. Don't, don't don't lie to my face. So to me, being nice to someone so you don't hurt their feelings is actually the worst thing you can do oh, in my yeah. mind. Because if they're asking you a question, they want your honest response. Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna lie to your face. I can't mm -hmm. do it. So tell tell our audience if you if they want to be around you, they want to work with you, they want to learn from you, how can they do that? So the quickest is is if you Google Google's Real Estate, you find me everywhere under that. My name, the way I run business is Google Becky or Google's Real Estate. Um, Instagram is probably my biggest platform. It's where I pour my heart out. Um, and that's probably the best way. And what if they want to learn social media from you? That would be gogosbootcamp.com. But uh, if they follow me on Google's Real Estate, they can see who I am and they'll get access to all of it. There's a lot of free uh, training there as well in my bio. Um, on Instagram. So they can start with that and see my style. And if they want to learn more, then it's gogosbootcamp.com. I also, if there are EX, sorry, EXP agents on here, I do give an EXP discount. Um, and that is gogosbootcamp.com forward slash EXP. But make sure you use, and that's 25% off, make sure you use your EXP email address when you sign up. Because if you use a personal email and I can not prove that you're an EXP agent, you won't get access to the platform. You won't get the discount. And she won't, she won't respect you because that would be a lie. <laughs> exactly. I, I would tell you something. This is the truth. A lot of times moms in real estate episodes are like done at like 20 minutes. Uh -huh. I feel we could do an hour in 20 minutes. Oh, easily. What a pleasure. I'm, I, I thank you so much, especially today for following through and taking your time. 
And it is a pleasure to know you. And I'm sure everyone will be blessed by this episode. So thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's my pleasure. I, as I told you, there's a little life event that's going on and I canceled everything else but this. Thank you. Oh, I really appreciate it. And I'm having you on again, probably three or four times because there's no end to no. how interesting your life is. It's awesome. I know. Oh, thank you guys. I it, it was my pleasure. I love uh, that is a reason why I got into real estate is because I wanted to be a mom first. I wanted to have that freedom. I wanted to have that time with my children, especially with with a diabetic. If I have to drop everything and go and go change a pump or a CGM, like I had to go on all field trips because otherwise he would have not been able to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, so wh what am I going to tell my boss about every two weeks? Sorry, peace. I can't come in today. Like, you know, I mean, like that you can't do that in a corporate America job. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was was amazing. And if, if being a mom is important to someone, I, I believe real estate is probably one of the best jobs. Um, and also it has no ceiling because that's my other yeah. thing. My competitive nature cannot get a job where I have a salary and a cap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if I reach it, then what? Exactly. Exactly. I love this real. I love this industry. I love it. I will do it till the day the Lord takes me. I think it's an amazing industry. Yeah. My, my husband really asked me, he's like, is it ever going to be good enough for you? And no. No. I, well, God, God put a thing in me. Strive. Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> the way I look at it, it's not because it's not enough. I have more than what I need. That's not because it's not enough. That's because when one day I'm at the pearly gates of heaven and God, I want him to be proud of me. I want him to say that I put every skill that he put in me, I put it to test and I took it to 100 plus percent so then he can be proud of me. And then when I'm at the end of my life journey, I can say I had a good run. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I planned everything. I travel. I ate the foods that I wanted. I hung with the people that I wanted. I lived the life and the lifestyle. And they left the legacy and I took my children around the globe. And, you know, what I mean, and I, and I introduced them to God because I think that's very important for them. It is my job for them to know about God, what they do with that information down on the road and how they live their job, their lives. That's I can't control that. But doing my job up front to know that at least they know um, that there is a God and, and, and how they should live their life after that. It's, it's their choice. So I wanted all of those things. And at the same time, I wanted to make money. <laughs> and you are. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, I'm going to let these people go. Stay on for just a second. Go, go. Thank you, guys. Uh, nice interaction today. Thank you for watching. Um, you can't help it because she's delightful. We, we love you guys. God bless you. Thank you. So much. Love you guys. Bye.